You are the headquarters of God. You are the dwelling place of God. You are the abode of God. The dwelling place, not the place that God visits. Whether you are in chaos in your life, in chaos in your business, in chaos in your family, whatever is happening in your life, because of Christ, you are assured of one thing, peace. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on the time of the hour when you are watching this broadcast. My name is Ben Fetcher. The name of the show is Beholding Christ and this is Wema TV. And I welcome you to our, uh, our podcast today. And I know that the Lord has so much for us today. And uh, I know you've been good. Everything is okay. And uh, you are making good progress because of Jesus Christ, not of works, lest anyone of us should boast. But it is by the grace of God. I am well myself. I've been good. I'm enjoying the goodness of the Lord. I'm enjoying the life in Christ. My God, it is just awesome, awesome, awesome. It is good to know that every day the Lord loads us with benefits every day and i remember what the psalmist says in psalms that bless the lord of my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name and forget not all his benefits so every day god loads us with benefits hallelujah and today is such a day when the lord has loaded us with benefits, the benefit of life, the benefit of salvation, the benefit of redemption. We have been redeemed. We have been saved by grace through faith, not of works, lest any one of us should boast. It is a gift from God. We have all that we need for life and godliness. Why? Because of Jesus Christ. And where? In Christ Jesus. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3, that blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. So my dear listeners, my dear viewers, wherever you are, I want you to know as long as the man you is in Christ, the man you or the woman you are in Christ, you have everything that is of God. And God has made it uh, possible that everything that he wants to show mankind and everything that he wants to give mankind. He has given it in totality, in completeness. And everything that is of God is found in no other place but in Christ. So are you in Christ today? If you are in Christ, everything is at your disposal. The joy of the Lord is at your disposal. The blessing of the Lord is at your disposal. The righteousness of God is at your disposal. The salvation of God from every kind of evil is at your disposal. You don't have to worry about anything because God has made everything available for you. Where? In Christ Jesus. And that is where we are. This is where we have life. This is where we have the, the fullness of the Godhead. The full presence of God is found in Christ. And because Christ is in you, you are a carrier of the presence of God. You should not worry about anything. You should not be fearful about anything. But you should have boldness. The Bible says in First John chapter 4, verse 17, that even in the day of judgment, we have boldness because as he is, so are we in this world. You are the Christ that the world needs to see because he lives inside you. Christ means the anointing. You carry the anointing of the Godhead. You carry the fullness of the Godhead because God could not dwell in houses built by human hands. That is why he found a dwelling place inside you. You know, when Jesus was walking here on earth, he said, foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. I know many things are said about that, but the amazing part of it is that now the Son of God, the Son of Man has found a place inside me, inside you. So he can no longer say that he has nowhere to lay his head. He has found a dwelling place in me in you. You are the headquarters of God. You are the dwelling place of God. You are the abode of God, the dwelling place, not the place that God visits. That is why sometimes I get angry when people say, Lord, we need your visitation. Man, sometimes it angers me because I know if a person has Christ in them, you are not the visit, the, you are not the motel, the highway motel of Christ. You are the dwelling place of Christ. So Christ dwells in you. The fullness of God dwells in you. The presence of God dwells in you. Wherever you go, you like this, you carry the presence of God. Yes, I'm talking about you. 
You that is watching this, I'm talking about you. You carry the presence of God. You are a God carrier. You, you are the abode of God. It is in you that God dwells in. Hallelujah. And how does he dwell in you? By his spirit. Praise God. When Jesus was ascending, he said to his disciples that when I go, I'll send another one like me and he will be inside you. He will be in you to the very end. I rejoice that Jesus did not remain on this earth because if Jesus remained on this earth, right now maybe he could be in Jerusalem. So he could not be here, but he, I rejoice that he ascended because when he ascended, he sent his spirit and now the Holy Spirit is not in one place at a time. He is all over. In your house as you're seated watching this program, in your, uh, in, your, in your car, wherever you are watching this program, he is inside you. You have the presence of God inside you. You don't have to go to a certain specific mountain, specific place. You don't have, you know, God does not live in geographical places because God is not physical. God is spiritual. He lives inside you. But as long as Christ was here on earth, Jesus Christ was here on earth, he was physical. That is why he was limited to be at one place at a time. But now the omniscient, the omnipotent, the omnipresent God who is present everywhere. Now he is present in your town because you are there. He is present in your family because you are there. He is present in your church because you are there. It is not in the church where we go to find the presence of God. It is not in the prayer places where we go to find the, uh, the presence of God. The presence of God lives inside us. Praise be to God. Sometimes the Holy Spirit or God himself is even shocked. I don't know whether I should say that he is shocked. That sometimes you leave your house and say, I'm going to a specific place to look for God. That is not a good statement. You're not going to look for God because God lives inside you. He is already inside you and he is asking, you are going to look for me where? Ha, I'm in you. Stop going to look for me. Fellowship with me because I'm inside you. Praise be to God. And today I want us to have a very interesting, uh, to have a very interesting topic. And uh, the topic for our day is uh, strength over adversity. Strength over adversity. That is what we'll be talking about today. And uh, I know this is a wonderful, uh, this is a wonderful message because it's about what we go through in our day-to-day -day activities. Even at a time like this, I know there are people who are going through tough times. At a time like this, like now in Kenya, we are heading towards the, the elections. And I know some people are worried. They don't know what to do. The economy has shot. Everything has gone up high. The prices of food, they have gone up high. Everything has changed. The prices of fuel, everything has changed. And some people are worried because... Even when everything else changes, your salary remains unchanged. And you are worried, what should I do? You're going through tough times. You're worried, what is happening in my life? But I have good news for you. I want us to go through this topic today, strength over adversities. How? That even in the midst of tribulations, in the midst of adversities, in the midst of tough times, we can still have strength because we are not we are in this world but we are not of this world though we could be experiencing things that the people of this world are experiencing we have a different source of life our life is from god the bible says in john chapter 10 verse 10 he says the thief cometh not but to steal to kill and to destroy but i am come that you may have life and have life in abundance. He's, he did not say that you'll have life in abundance when the economy is good. He said you will have life and have it in abundance at all, all, all times. Praise be to God. Even in adversities, when you don't know where to get school fees from for your children, when, when you don't know where to get your next meal, when you don't know what to do, maybe your business is going down, maybe your family is at chaos, things are not okay, but there is a message for you today. And I, I would like us to go to the book of John, chapter 16. And uh, we'll use the, the, the New King James Version. The New King James Version of John's chap John, chapter 16. John, chapter 16. I'll read verse 33. John 16, from verse 33. Yes, I, I'm reading from the New King James Version. It says... These are the words of Jesus. So my version is written 
in red. Maybe I can start from verse that one, John 16 from that one. He says, Jesus answered them, do you now believe? Indeed, the hour is coming, yes, has now come that you'll be scattered each to his own and will leave me alone. And yet I am not alone because the Father is in me. Verse 33 is our main text today. That the, uh, these things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you'll have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. I repeat that verse again. He says, these things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have what? You may have peace. So that is an assurance that in Christ you are assured of one thing, the peace of God. Hallelujah. Whether things are good or bad, whether you are in chaos in your life, in chaos in your business, in chaos in your family, whatever is happening in your life, because of Christ, you are assured of one thing, peace. And let me tell you, if there is something that is so precious in this world to human beings and to humanity is peace. You may lack finances, you may lack money, you may lack, uh, you may, you may not be happy, you may not be having a job, you may be not, uh, you may be going through issues. But if you don't have peace, that is the worst experience. But it is possible for you to go through issues, but you have peace. So you have, you know, peace is calmness in the midst of the storm. Even when you are going through whatever you are going through, you can have peace, the peace of God. And that peace does not mean absence of tough times, does not mean absence of circumstances, doesn't mean absence of storms. Peace means being calm even in the midst of the storm. So one thing that Christ has assured you, listen, he says, these things I have spoken to you that in me, you may have what? You may have peace. So where is peace? In Christ. Hallelujah. So before you make any, uh, before you proceed and say anything else, this has been assured to every one of you that believes in Christ. Peace is a guarantee. You have been assured of peace. And this kind of peace that God gives, it's a different kind of peace because this peace is the peace that surpasses human understanding. So in the midst of the storm, when you are go going through those tough times, you are guaranteed of peace. And this peace surpasses all human understanding. This is where you are going through tough times, but you can afford a smile. You can afford uh, to be happy. You can rejoice because you know after all, these things are happening in my life, but they are not the determinant of how my life will be because the determinant of your life is not your situations. The determinant of your life is not your circumstances. It's not the times or the, or the conditions that you go through. The determinant of your life is your position in Christ. And your position in Christ is that you are a son of God. So he says, in this world, okay, he says, these things I have spoken to you that in me you may have peace. So if you are in Christ, peace is guaranteed. These things, okay, but uh, the, the second part says, in this world, you'll have tribulation. In this world, you'll have what? Tribulation. Where? In this world. So he says, in me, there is peace. But because you are in this world, you'll have tribulation. Praise God. So this answers a question that many believers ask. How comes that those people who are born again, those people who have God in them and they live in Christ, why do they suffer? Jesus answers this in one verse. He says, in me you have peace. But because you are in this world, you'll have tribulation. So why do people suffer though they have Christ in them? They suffer because they are in this world. Jesus said, in this world, you'll have tribulation. He didn't say, you may, he didn't say you may have tribulation. He didn't say there is a probability to have tribulation. He didn't say possibly you go through tribulation. He said in this world, because you're in this world, it is a guarantee that you'll have tribulation. So there is, there is no one who is, uh, uh, who is exempted from tribulation. Everyone is included in this tribulation. Why? Because you're in this world. As long as you are in this world, you will have tribulation. These are the words of Jesus. But the story does not end there. He says, but be of good cheer. Anytime I read the Bible and I see a bad man, I rejoice because I know 
The previous statement is not the end of the story. It's not the end of the story. So he says, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Praise be to God. So it is possible, though you are in this world, you go through tribulation, but it is possible that in the midst of the tribulation, you can rejoice, you can cheer up, you can celebrate God. Because he said, the reason why we cheer up, he says, is this, I have overcome the world. So because Christ has overcome the world, we can cheer up. Why? Because now this Christ who overcame is inside you. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Because now Christ is inside you. No matter the kind of adversities, no, no matter the kind of uh, trials, no matter the kind of uh, uh, difficult times that you go through, you can rejoice. You can celebrate. Why? Because he who overcame the world lives where? Inside you. So he has said two things there. Uh, and not two things. Actually, there are three things. He has said, number one, you are in Christ. And in Christ, there is peace. So because there is peace in Christ, you will enjoy peace. But because you are in the world, you will have to go through tribulation. Then he, uh, he says again, but that you, even in the midst of the tribulation, you can have to cheer up. You can cheer up. You can have good cheer. You can, uh, you can rejoice. Because he has overcome. Hallelujah. Maybe I can read it from uh, using the TPT, the Passion Translation. The same verse, John 16, verse 33. And everything I've taught you is so that the peace which is in me will be in you and will give you great confidence as you rest in me. Wow, that is amazing. He says the peace of God that is in Christ is given to us so that we can have great confidence as we rest where? In him. Hallelujah. As we rest in him. Then he says, For in this world you'll experience trouble and sorrows, but you must be courageous, for I have conquered the world. Hallelujah. So you can enjoy rest. You can enjoy peace even in the midst of trouble because Christ has conquered the world. Praise be to God. And because he has conquered, his victory has been made our victory. Actually, the Bible says that now we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. So what have we established this far? That as long as we are in this world, we'll experience trouble, we'll experience adversities. But now, the problem is not the adversities. The problem is how we respond to adversities. I can say the problem is not your problem. The problem is how you respond to the problem. <laughs> I hope you got that. Anyway, so God did not promise a problem-free life in this world. So do not let anyone deceive with a lie that now that you are a Christian, your life will be problem-free and that your problems will automatically go away. No, 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 that is not the truth. Because Jesus said that you will have tribulation as long as you are as long as you are where in this world. And notice, He didn't say you may have tribulations. He said you will have them. So it is very certain that you'll have what tribulations. So it is normal as long as you are where in this world and you are in this body. So the first thing that makes us to go through tribulation is because we are in this world. The second thing is because we are in this body. Because we are in this body. Let me uh, read a verse in the book of Corinthians. I read from the New King James Version. Corinthians chapter 4 from verse 7. Sorry, it's 2 Corinthians chapter 4 from verse 7. It says, but we have this treasure in other vessels, that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. You see, he says, we have this treasure in Aden vessel. Christ is the treasure. The Aden vessel is this body. So because we have this body, we are hard pressed on every side. So what qualifies you to go through tribulation is this body. You are in this world and number two, you have this body. So because you have this body, which is a result of the fallen world, you'll experience uh, tribulation, he says, we are hard pressed on every side. But there is an assurance that we cannot be crushed. We are not crushed. We are perplexed, but we cannot be in despair. 
We are persecuted but not forsaken. We are struck down but we cannot be destroyed. Why? Because though we have this body, we must also remember that this is an earthen vessel that carries the heavenly treasure. We are an earthen vessel that carries the heavenly treasure. So the world will attack the earthen vessel, which is part of the world. So this body is attacked. So because we are in this body, we experience attacks now and then. But we have an we have a heavenly treasure inside us. That is why though we are hard pressed, we can never be crushed. Praise God. So I say it. What makes the difference is how now we respond to our problems. How we respond to the circumstances that we go through. And as I said, the topic is strength over adversities. So we have two different people. We have the, the common man. And we have this, the, the man in Christ. We have the man in Adam and we have the man in Christ. The man in Adam does not have Christ in them. So they, they are separated from God. They don't have God in them. Praise God. But the man in Christ, have, have, that man has God inside them. So how these two people re, uh, respond to tribulations are two different ways. The man who has no God inside them, they have no hope. They have no hope. That is why they get into despair. That is where you have heard stories of people committing suicide. Others get into depression. Others get into, into the places of uh, uh, some sicknesses that are brought by depression. Others get into high blood pressure. You know, all those things that are caused by mental or by, by, by thinking too much. You are worried. You are worried about what, uh, what is going on in your life. You are worried about the economy. You are worried about the, the prices of the fuel. So they get into depression. Some of them end up committing suicide. So those are people that are without God. But those people who have God, who have Christ in them, the Bible says in Colossians 1 verse 27, that Christ in us is the hope of glory. So anyone who has Christ in them, they have a hope. You have a living hope. Tribulation is not the end of the story. Difficult times is not the end of the story. Why? Because we have Christ inside us. That is to say, Christ in us is the hope of glory. So for everyone who has Christ in them, there is hope inside them. And this hope is not hope for shame. It is the hope of glory. You're not hoping to be ashamed. You're not hoping to die. You're not hoping to be depressed. You're not hoping that things will go and will become worse. You're hoping that even if they become worse, there is glory, the glory of God. And the glory of God is not determined by what you have and, or what you don't have. The glory of God is determined by, by Christ. And now that you have Christ in you, you must, uh, because you have Christ in you, you have the hope that the manifestation of the glory of God will soon be made available in your life. Praise be to God. So how people respond is differently. And I would like us to see something here. How not to respond to uh, to adversities? Because we have realized that no one is no one is inevitable. No one is exempted from adversities. No one is exempted from tribulations. But there is a way to not to respond to adversities. The first thing that you sh the first way not to respond to adversities. I don't know why I began with how not to. I know in our next episode we look at how to respond to adversities. But now the first thing that you should not do. You should not. Uh, think that tribulations are strange or they are abnormal. They are not abnormal, neither are they strange. Because if Jesus said you will have tribulations, you can be sure you will as long as you are in this world. So it is not an abnormal thing. It is very normal. Again, I read a verse in the book of First Peter chapter 4, verse 12. First Peter 4, verse 12. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12. So he says, we should not respond in a way that suggests like the tribulations are abnormal. They are not abnormal. They are not strange. The Bible says in the New King James Version, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12. Beloved, do not think it is, uh, do not think it strange concerning the fairy trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you. But rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's suffering, that when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. So what do we see from that part of the scripture? That we should not think that what you are going through is strange or it is abnormal. 
It is not abnormal. Praise be to God. So never respond in a way that suggests like, I'm shocked. I should not be going through this. No, it is not abnormal. It is not strange. It is something that happens to all men. It is common to man. That is why what the scripture says in another place, it is common to man. So whatever you are going through right now, it is not abnormal. It is not a strange thing. It is common to man. So don't be, don't be shocked. Don't be surprised. The, the, the second way not to, uh, the second way of how not to respond to tribulations is do not think that because you have a lot of money or you are from a certain background or you got a particular great job or you are from a certain a certain city uh, or you are from a certain country that has a good economy or you are you, you should never think that because you are from a good background or all the things that I've mentioned, that you are immune to tribulations. No one is immune to tribulations. What we may experience differently is the level of tribulations or the level of uh, problems. You might face a different kind of challenge, but you sure, and you must be sure that you will have them. Maybe you are a billionaire. Your problem is different from the one who has, who is having uh, who is not a billionaire. Praise be to God. Then the other thing that is very important, and this is where many people find themselves, is pe many people think like, I have trials because I have sinned. So do not think that you go through trials because you have sinned. And many people have fallen into this category. Anything, that, anything bad that comes your way, you start attaching it to something maybe you've not been doing. For example, Maybe you woke up in the morning, you are a businessman, you woke up in the morning, and uh, in the morning you did, you did not even pray for, for the day. You didn't pray for your customers, you didn't pray for anything. So you, you woke up and you started your normal day activities. And you realize that that day, uh, there are no clients who are coming, the business is down. And you start saying, it is because I did not pray. That is why I'm experiencing trouble. No, that is not the reason. It's because you are in this world and you have a body. And because you are in this world, there are tribulations. He didn't say that if you sin, you'll experience tribulation. He said in this world, you'll experience tribulation. I will tackle this in the next episode because I can see our time is so much gone. I will tackle this issue on the next trouble. But do not ever think that you are suffering because you sinned. We'll see it in our next episode. And I know you are blessed. Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you for my viewers today. I call them blessed. In their going out, in their coming in, they have this confidence that whatever they go through, they can cheer up, they can rejoice because you are inside them and they are assured of your peace and they are assured that because you overcame, they will also overcome. Whatever the, my viewer may be going through right now, I declare that you will experience victory upon victory because you have made him, you have made her more than a conqueror. And indeed, he and she is a more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. I thank you because it is well with their souls, because the Bible says it is well with the righteous. In Jesus' name, we pray and we believe. Amen, amen, amen. So uh, keep tuned because this episode will continue. Our topic has been strength over adversities. The show is Beholding Christ. My name is Ben Fetcher and this is Wema TV. I call you blessed because indeed you are blessed. Amen.